welcome back and in this video we will take something very exciting I find it uh, yeah, fun to work with uh, here I have an example of an underground tank or a swimming pool design using a finite element package uh, SAP 2000 SAP 2000 is a CSI package um, I find it very useful for these type of structures here we have a, you can consider that as, as a tank or a swimming pool, simply eight meters long by three meters wide, and it has soil all around it. It is underground. Uh, we have a wall height of two meters. I took a section here, and a maximum wall height from the base of the pool or the tank, we, call, we, call, we will call it tank, we will stick with tank. <laughs> um, so the maximum height is 2 meters. And there is a cantilevered height above the ground of 500 millimeters. Sometimes they backfill against that, whether it may be a footpath or a, um, you know, a garden bed, whatever feature wall they might want to make it. The width of this tank is 200 millimeters. The height of water from the, uh, the bottom of the base to the top here is 1500. What else do we have? Okay, we can start here with the soil properties, external live load surcharge and the internal water pressure. The soil density was given to us at, at 18 kilonewton per meter cube. Water density is 10 kilonewton per meter cube. Ka, the active uh, soil pressure, or the active pressure, is given to us uh, as 0.33, and and we all know that this is a uh, an engineered geotechnical properties of the soil, which is dependent on the internal angle of friction. The Ks the soil stiffness that's given to us in this example as 5000 kPa per meter which is a modulus of subgrade reaction 5000 kPa per meter just means that it takes 5000 kilonewton to suppress a meter by a meter of soil one meter vertically uh, okay uh, here we have the total height of two meters and the height retained is 1500 and live load is 5 kPa. What is this live load? Live load could be any machinery, vehicle access, people walking on uh, on the soil here nearby the pool or the tank. Um, and this vertical uh, force will, will be translated into a uniform pressure against the uh, wall. The concrete and reinforcement properties, we have the compressive capacity is 20 MPa, steel uh, yield of 500 MPa and modulus of elasticity 24,000 MPa. These are very important parameters we need to know before we can use the program. Now, uh, loads ignored for simplicity. What are the loads? There are many loading combinations we, we can take, but we will ignore this. The wind loads on the 500 millimeter cantilever. Okay, we should be taking wind load here. Uh, I'll go back to this, for this section here. We should be taking wind load here, okay? But we will ignore it for, for simplicity. We also should be taking um, loads from shrinkage and swelling strain of the concrete, which we call a mo uh, the code calls it moisture variation. What that means is sometimes when the pool is or when the tank is empty, um, it, it is exposed to heat and we can get further shrinkage strain. Okay, and we need to take that into account. If the pool is full, you could imagine there's more moisture in there and there will be swelling strain. And that, that should be considered in the loading combination uh, if you want to take it accurately. There's also temperature gradient loading, especially for tanks with uh, 
different temperature fluids. Uh, sometimes I have, uh, you know, a hot, uh, hot fluids in there, or hot water, and the outside temperature is cold. So there will be a, te a complete temperature gradient difference, and that needs to be taken into account. And earthquake loads. Now there are two main cases that we will um, we will take into consideration. One case is when the tank is full and the other case is when the tank is empty. The tank being full, how do we consider it? Okay, we have a few factors here we should consider. The tank is full of water. The first load is G self, which is the load of the structure itself, the self weight of the concrete, plus G super. G super here is um, the loads of the tiles or services that they put in the tank, plus FWB, which is the water base, and that will be a uniform pressure on the base of the tank. The water FWB is simply the density multiplied by the height of how much water it is, okay? And then plus FWW, which is the triangular distribution. As this tank is full of water, water wants to also put pressure on the side walls, but it will be in a triangular distribution from here to here okay and at the bottom below the base of this tank we have the uh, the, the, um, the soil stiffness or the sub modulus of subgrade reaction and we can model this in the program as springs okay uh, now how do we calculate this very simple we say G super is given to us as 1 kPa which is the tiles and services. FW, like I said before, 10 kilonewton meter cube multiplied by 1.5, which gives us 15 kPa uniform pressure. You might ask me, why did I take it as 1.5? If the depth of the tank is 200 millimeters, we should be really taking it as 1500 minus 200, and that will be 1300. But I took it as 1.5 because it will be easier for us to input in the program later. Um, in this case, we have the height retained with soil is also 1.5. So you could imagine inputting one value is, is a lot easier. And 200 millimeters extra uh, of uh, water pressure is not going to be a big of a deal. FWW uh, is the same sort of calculation. The density of the water multiplied by 1.5 which will also give you 15 kPa. But this time it's triangular or linear distribution. Uh, the load pattern, we will talk about this later in the program. It's uh, very important to, do, to cover, but we might talk about it later. Um, in case two, when the tank is empty, we take all the water out and we just put in the live load or the surcharge and the soil pressure. What do we have? We still consider the self weight of the structure plus G super plus the F soil. What is F soil? It's simply Ka, the active pressure multiplied by the density of the soil multiplied by the height retained plus Ka times the live load which is 5 kPa. Let's uh, have a look here and you know, the self weight of the structure is generally determined by the program when we input the density of the concrete the program works it out automatically. Over here F soil we have 0.33 multiplied by 18 kilonewton meter cube times 1.5 is 8.91 kPa. And then the live load, 0.33 times 5, which is 1.65 kPa uniform distributed. It is, all, it is always good to draw this separately so you can understand what is happening. Here we can see 
on the outside we have the live load as a uniform uh, distribution and then we have the soil stress as a triangular distribution if we add it we can consider both of them as a live load okay and then we can add them together you can see at the top here just under the cantilever the soil has no pressure at this point but there is a live load pressure so if we add it we will have 1.65 kPa at this point and then at the base of the profile we will have 8.91 plus 1.65 and that will be 10.56 kPa these are the main parameters that we need to uh, study and hopefully in the next video we will go through uh, SAP 2000 and step-by-step -step procedure and how to calculate the, the moment, the shear, uh, settlement and all of these fun things. I hope you enjoyed it. Please uh, share and subscribe and have a great afternoon.